Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 31st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Boston, Massachusetts. Came across an interesting fish today that I quickly wrote up in a diary. What was sort of interesting about this fish was that it did capture two-factor credentials, but also the user's email address and password. What wasn't quite clear was uh, why uh, the, all this information was collected. Often the username and password for an email account is collected in order to reset uh, the password for the account being fished here. But what apparently was happening here was that the target website luno.com uh, cryptocurrency exchange is actually using well a fairly common but not really very well thought out uh, two-factor authentication scheme. And it isn't really two-factor. What's happening is that when you're logging into this site, the site will send a one-time password to your email address. So that's why the attacker needs your email account details in order to retrieve that second password. But really the email account is definitely nothing that you have. It's really just something else. You know a second password, so it doesn't really qualify as two-factor. Now, Luno allows you to set up SMS as second factor. And uh, without really talking about you know the drawbacks of SMS and why it shouldn't really be used for a high value website like a financial website as a second factor. In this case, it's actually just an additional de destination for this one time password code. So, in addition to email, it will also be sent as an SMS. Luno is not alone here. A lot of regular banks, so not just crypto coin exchanges and such are making the exactly same mistakes if they even offer a sort of a second factor at all. And Google today released Google Chrome 76, which fixes 43 different security vulnerabilities. But in addition to that, there are a couple other security changes. First of all, Adobe Flash is now disabled by default. It's still part of the browser and should be removed in its entirety sometime next year. Also, detecting a cognitive mode is more difficult in this version of Google Chrome. Another sort of change that uh, caught my interest is that this version of Google Chrome is implementing fetch metadata. The goal of this particular specification is to give a web server a better idea as to why a certain request was triggered. This is particularly important to defend against cross-site request forging. Like the problem sort of in the past was that you didn't know was the request triggered because a user clicked on a link or because the browser decided to load a URL based on a source attribute in an image tag. Well, uh, this extension now does offer a number of additional headers that do provide additional information about why a particular request was sent. Interesting new standard. So if you are a web developer, take a look at the specification and I will add a link to the show notes with a link to the details about this update for Google Chrome. And about a week ago on the 22nd, Apple released its security update 2019 004. Now, this security update applied to macOS Sierra, High Sierra, as well as the latest version, Mojave. Apparently, it had some issues with High Sierra and Sierra. So, Apple actually removed this security update, in particular for newer MacBook pros that used the new T2 security chip. Well, as of yesterday, this update is available again. So if you are still running High Sierra or Sierra, you may want to double check that you have this latest update applied. And if not, well, uh, check Apple's website.
Now, a number of uh, these voice assistants like Apple's Siri were in the news recently because voice snippets recorded by these voice assistants are regularly reviewed by contractors hired by companies running these systems in order to improve the accuracy. In particular for Siri, there wasn't really a way to prevent this from happening. Well, a uh, security researcher Jan Kaiser now found actually a way to disable the server-side logging of Siri commands. You can disable that in Apple's configurator and create your own profile that will then disable this feature. If you're interested in implementing this on your devices supporting Siri, I'll add a link to the respective GitHub repository to the show notes. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.